In today's video, we're going to continue our discussion on universal basic income by talking about the value added tax. Stay tuned. In previous videos, we've discussed the universal basic income at length. We're now much more informed about UBI than we were when we first started. One of the main topics that comes up when discussing UBI is the value added tax or VAT. Many of you are concerned about what a VAT tax is. Some of you see it as something nefarious or underhanded. Some of you see it as a way to level the playing field in terms of economic inequality. Today I'm going to tell you outright what the VAT tax is, what it entails, and how it compares to other forms of taxation in terms of supporting the economy. You can always support us here at Smart Money by clicking the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps us get the word out about the channel. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button below to improve your outlook on money and your life. Let's start at the beginning by talking about taxes. Taxes, according to Investopedia, are an involuntary fee levied on individuals or corporations and enforced by a government entity, whether local, regional, or national, in order to finance government activities. Taxes fall on whomever pays the burden of the tax, whether it's the entity being taxed, such as a business, or the end customers of the business's goods. The United States has a progressive tax system. What that means is a higher percentage of tax revenue is collected from higher earning individuals and corporations. It's important to note that people pay different tax rates according to how they earn their money. People who work for the money pay income taxes, which tend to be paid at a higher rate than capital gains tax and corporate tax. For example, the average single American paid approximately 30% of his or her earnings in taxes in 2015, split between income tax, state tax, Medicare, and Social Security. Capital gains taxes are interesting. Capital gains is the difference between the cost of an asset when it's purchased versus when it's sold. The taxes on positive difference is called a capital gains tax. If the asset is held for less than a year, the profit is called short-term capital gains and is taxed as ordinary income. If the asset is held for a year or more, it's considered long-term capital gains and is taxed at 0%, 15%, or 20% according to your tax bracket. Corporate taxes are a bit different. On paper, the U.S. at one time had one of the highest corporate tax rates in the world at 35%. However, on December 22, 2017, President Donald Trump lowered the corporate tax rate to 21%, the lowest rate since 1939. While the corporate tax rate was 35% on paper, most large corporations never paid 35%. A 2017 Congressional Budget Office report noted that the average effective tax rate on corporations was just 18.6%. This means that the average corporation paid less than two-thirds as much tax as a percentage of income than the average American. This also means that the average corporation was able to lower its tax burden by 16.4%. If corporations are able to reduce their tax burden similarly under current corporate tax law, they could see an effective tax rate of 4.6%. Where the previous forms of taxes we've discussed are levied on income, a value-added tax, or VAT tax, is a tax on consumption. It will be paid at the same rate by corporations and individuals alike. VAT is added onto products at every point value has been added. Raw materials are taxed. Any enhancement to the raw materials to make it sellable are taxed. And finally, the finished product is taxed at sale. Many may think that means the value added tax is a lot like a national sales tax. While it does sound similar, there are some key differences. A national sales tax is only paid at the point of sale by the consumer. The VAT tax system is invoice-based and collected at all points during the item's production. Every seller between the producer of the raw material to the seller of the final product charges VAT tax to the buyer. The tax is then sent to the government. As of 2018, 166 of the 195 nations in the world use a VAT tax. All the top 10 economies in the world, with the exception of the United States, use a VAT tax including China, Japan, Germany, and India. Let's conduct a thought experiment. We'll say that the United States implements a VAT tax of 5%, the same that Canada currently does. How would that look when put into practice? The first difference is that you take home more of your paycheck. A VAT would replace income tax, returning an average of 13.5% of your gross pay, your paycheck before taxes, to you. If the average American makes $46,800 per year, and he or she currently pays about 30% in taxes, the person actually takes home $32,760 per year, or $2,730 per month. 
Under a VAT tax, the average American would still make $46,800 per year, but only pay around 16.5% in taxes. The person actually takes home $40,581 per year, or $3,381 per month. Let's assume you'd like to put that extra money you're now making toward buying a cell phone. How would that work? The manufacturer of the phone's electronic components, let's call them smart electronics, purchases metal from the supplier. The supplier charges smart electronics $100 plus a $5 VAT. The supplier pays the $5 VAT to the government. Smart electronics adds value by creating electronic components. They sell these components to the cell phone builder, let's say Samsung in this case, Smart Electronics charges Samsung $200 plus a $10 VAT. Smart Electronics sends $5 of the VAT it collected to the government and it keeps the other $5 as reimbursement for what they already paid to the metal dealer. Samsung adds value by making cell phones. They then sell the phones to Verizon for $300 plus a $15 VAT. Samsung pays the government $5 of the VAT and keeps the other $10 as reimbursement for what they already paid to Smart Electronics. Lastly, Verizon sells you the phone for $500 plus a $25 VAT. Verizon pays the government $10. The VAT paid at each point of the product's construction represents 5% of the value added by the seller. Some might believe a VAT tax will negatively impact the country's ability to make money. There is no evidence to support that. For example, the United States expects to collect $2.6 trillion in federal, state, and local income tax in 2020. The Congressional Budget Office's Joint Committee on Taxation estimates that paying 5% VAT tax on a broad base of goods and services would raise over $3 trillion per year, $400 billion more than income taxes are expected to produce. Supporters of VAT like it for many reasons. They believe that VAT encourages corporations to pay taxes and disincentivizes attempts to avoid them. Tax compliance is rewarded at each step of the process because manufacturers and retailers are responsible for collecting VAT on the goods that they create or sell. VAT is a productive way to raise tax revenue, improve tax collection efficiency, increase a nation's gross domestic product, and eliminate budget deficits. VAT's detractors raise valid concerns as well. They argue that VAT is similar to a flat tax, making consumers of all income levels pay the same rate. They argue that this disproportionately impacts people of lower incomes. The income inequality argument has been recognized and addressed by several nations who use a VAT tax. Canada and the United Kingdom offer many tax exemptions. They are normally on needs like children's clothes, child care, and groceries. In the current U.S. tax system, the average single American pays significantly higher percentage of his or her income in taxes than the average large corporation. VAT tax is seen as a way to address that concern. VAT is a tax on consumption that is used around the world to ensure that people are only taxed on what they spend. Each point of production supply chain is taxed at the same rate. In the United States, the government would stand a profit from implementing a VAT tax over the current progressive tax structure. Well, that's my video on value-added tax explained. I appreciate you watching. Let me know any questions, comments, or topic suggestions you might have on financial literacy in the comments below. Make sure you like the video for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to be the first to know when I come out with new content. And be sure to share the video with a friend. Check out the links in the description for offer information. Lastly, if you want to get started investing in the stock market and are looking for free stock, Robinhood is holding a promotion in the description. Use the link to start your Robinhood account and claim your free stock share. Remember, free stock shares value up to $150. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.